of wood. Well, Granny wants it on the truck. Put it down. With all the wood we got back in the cabin, we sure ain't gonna haul none from Beverly Hills. Oh, she says it's for on the way. On the way? <laughs> Granny, what in the world do you do? I'm making sure we don't freeze to death. It's warm here. Won't be when we get in the mountains. You figure to keep that thing burning for six days? And six nights. Don't forget, it's December every other place but here. Can't blame California. The weather's as mixed up as the people. I'll be glad when I get back where there's some snow and ice. I can't wait to see Ma and Jeff Green. Yeah, it'll be my fine Christmas present for your Ma and your sister, or us dropping in on them like this. Now, tell me again, exactly what did Marie say? She simply said the Clamets were loading their truck and appeared to be moving out. Why? What could have happened? Who offended them? Whoever it was, I'll have them driven out of Beverly Hills. Chief, <laughs> Chief, don't get so upset. I know a man with $25 million in your bank is a Is poor... that why you think I'm upset? Because Jed Clampett has $25 million in my bank? Isn't it? Of course not. The thing that upsets me is the fact he might take it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whatever happened to the key to that door, but I reckon with our stuff out of there, ain't nothing left anybody want to take, except some old pictures. Oh, Miss Hathaway says a couple of them pictures is Rembrandt. All right, after Christmas, we'll see he gets them back. <laughs> John! John! <laughs> where, where, where are you going? Going home. What? Well, please, you can't go away and leave me like this. All right, climb on. I reckon we got room for you. Oh, my heavens, we caught you before you left. Granny, is there room for two back there? Yeah, if you want to squat next to the stove. <laughs> no, we don't want to go with you. We want you to stay here. We'll be back after Christmas. Well, Mr. Clampett, if, if you want to go home for Christmas, let me make the arrangements. I'll have you there tonight. Tonight? Clean back home? Yes, and you'll arrive in style, too. Well, Miss Hathaway, I think Granny and Ellie Mae should have mink coats for the trip, don't you? Oh, Oh. Well, let's go take care of it, and the reservations, too. Mr. Clampett, you start unloading the truck and leave everything to us. You'll be home in five or six hours on the jet. What's a jet, Pa? I don't know. Uh, bus or jitney, I reckon. Get us here tonight? You heard what he said. Well, that will be a surprise to Pearl. Uncle Jet, it took us six days to get out of here. How are we going to get back home in five or six hours? That bus driver must know a doozy of a shortcut. Pat, ah, have we got plenty of champagne and caviar? I guess so. Why? The entire first class section has been reserved for a family of VIPs, the Clampets. Wow. <laughs> Young ladies, I presume you've been advised of special arrangements for the Clampett family? Oh, oh yes, yes, indeed. We certainly have. Here they come now. Oh, get a load of those minks. Yeah. Granny, Ellie Mae, right this way. I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable in the lounge. Wait. Uh-oh. How did they get past the gate? Let's get them out of here before the clamp would see them. Uh, I'm afraid you're in the wrong section. May I see your tickets, please? Well, I don't think we got any. See, this bus sure is fancy. Bus? You've come to the wrong place. You want the bus station. Now, just go back the way you came and ask for the traveler's aid. Now, they'll help you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Granny, Ellie Mae, come on. We're on the wrong bus. Mr. Clampett, what's the trouble? This is Mr. Clampett? Of course. Right this way. No problem. Here, Jethro. Keep the tickets. Now... Mr. Clampett, you have the money Mr. Drysdale gave you? Yes, ma'am, right here. A limousine will meet you and take you to Pearl's house. And Mr. Drysdale is phoning ahead to Mr. Brewster to be sure your cabin is in order. Well, don't let him give away a surprise to Pearl. Oh, he won't. Well, happy landing, Merry Christmas, and au revoir. Merry Back Christmas to you, too. Yeah. And Jethro, here's something for you if you promise to bring it back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take good care of them, and remember, the tall, young, good-looking one is mine. Now, fasten your belt. Well, I ain't wearing one, ma'am, just my gallus. <laughs> I meant your seatbelt. Mm, no, 
This is a fancy bus. <laughs> Looks like the bus is commencing to pull out. Now we'll see if this bus driver knows an all-fired fancy shortcut. <laughs> That's you and me watch the road so we can remember it. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> Ask me, this bus driver of ours is lost. Just keeps us circling and a turning. <laughs> you notice no shortcut yet. Ding, ding. Listen to him a racing that engine. Yeah, but the wheels must be spinning in the mud. We ain't moving. <laughs> Got her out of the mud. Yeah, we're moving now. Look at this split, too. My dog is if he gets to going much faster, this thing is going to leave the ground. <laughs> and tell that bus driver to slow down. He ain't got time for that. Let's get off of this thing before it gets any higher. <laughs> now, wasn't that a smooth takeoff? You may unfasten your seatbelts anytime you like. Would you folks like some champagne and caviar? Or would you prefer a nice hot meal? We have steak, chicken, fish, anything you like. Oh, no thanks. We had a mess of grits and jowls before we left home. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to relax then. Take a little nap. There. Whoop. <laughs> Doggies. Granny, ain't that something? It's good for the room, it is. <laughs> now, if there's anything else that we can do to make your trip more comfortable, just press the little button. And we'll be right here. And girls ain't a bit scared. Sure is friendly, too. Often to share their food with us. <laughs> you still want me to go up and talk to the bus driver, Uncle Jed? No, I reckon not, Jethro. Don't nobody else seem skittish, and we don't want folks to think this is our first bus ride. <laughs> Howdy, Pearl. How am I, Winch? When are you gonna learn not to walk into a body's house without a body inviting you? Well, I rang and you didn't come. You, you didn't give me time, you old coot. Now, don't you never do that again. Get out of my parlor. I like you when you're mad, Pearl. <laughs> You're an exciting woman. <laughs> Homer, you get out of here. I don't have time for your foolishness. Jeffreen and me is going to California to spend Christmas with Cousin Jay. <laughs> well, and I reckon you don't care to hear what I got to say. That's right. About Mr. Brewster. Mr. Brewster? Yeah, that tall, good-looking city fellow works for the oil company, drives that big car. W what about him? Is he in town? I've been ordered from your parlor, Pearl. I think I'd best be but, going. Homer, Homer, I, I didn't mean it. Please, Homer, you tell me about Mr. Brewster, and I'll bake you a sweet potato pie. Well? And for dessert, red horse swimming in elderberry wine. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> tell me. Well, you see, he stopped over at the Emporium to get some cheese and crackers. Said he was going to be over at Jed's cabin alone all day, and he didn't have no food. <sighs> Thank you, Homer. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute, Pearl. You ain't going to do me out of my tater pie, are you? Well, of course not. You get it. Well, when? When? Well, I'll let you know. I'm busy right now. Bye, <laughs> Homer. <laughs> Ding, dang, darn it. I done it again. Let some pretty woman twist me around her finger. <laughs> I hate to go home. Mama's going to give me the ticket. Jed. Hey, Granny. I just had a terrible thought. What's that? Suppose we get to Pearl's house and she ain't there. Where would she be? Out chasing that Brewster fellow. That's where. Ah, oh, she ain't likely to catch him in her horse and buggy. <laughs> Now, 
now, Betsy. I play my cards, right? You get to keep that there blanket permanent. Because I'm going to have something else to keep me warm. A husband. <laughs> Ain't that a beautiful word, husband? Husband. And what's more, I'll be riding in that big, fancy automobile. So you can retire to pasture with that good-looking racehorse from Hot Springs. <laughs> well, I thought I heard a horse. Mrs. Modine, well, won't you come in? Well, thank you. It's a mighty cold today, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, it's nice to see you again. I, uh, I'm sorry it's so cold in here. Didn't bother to build a fire in the fireplace, and I'm afraid that kerosene stove doesn't put out much heat. Well, I can't stay but a minute. I just came by to give you this and say Merry Christmas. Well, thank you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, it's just something that I made myself. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Land to mercy. Look at this place. Why? You men just can't manage alone, can you? It takes a woman. <laughs> oh, please don't bother. I, I won't be here. You see, I'm going home to Tulsa for the holidays. I won't go no trouble. I'll just throw together a little snack, and while you're eating, I'll tidy up a bit. This is the most fantastic miracle I've ever seen. The way you produced this banquet right out of thin air. Ham, fried chicken, roast pork, and this delicious sweet potato pie. That's my own special recipe. Oh. Here, I wash you down with some red horse in elderberry juice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that is sensational juice. But, Mrs. Bodine, I really, I, I just can't eat another bite. I... Why, Mrs. Bodine, what have you done to this cabin? Oh, do you see a difference? And where did you get those curtains? Well, I just run them up while you was eating. Really, you are a remarkable woman. You, you cook, you sew, you're a wonderful housekeeper. And, and I love it. It ain't work to me at all. It's pure enjoyment. Mrs. Bodine, I know that this must seem awfully sudden to you, and I, I know you have lots of ties and lots of activities here in the hills, but I was wondering, do you think you could possibly be happy living in a city like Tulsa? Tulsa? That's where you live, ain't it? Yes, I have a very nice home there, but... Frankly, it needs you, and I think Mother will agree. You want me to meet your mom, Mother? Well, actually, it isn't necessary, and I know Mother will approve my choice. Now, you don't have to give me your answer immediately. You just think it over. Y and yes, that's, that's my answer. Yes. <laughs> but we haven't even discussed money. I'll give you ever since I might. Mrs. Bodine, as my housekeeper, I will be paying you. Housekeeper. That would carry for Mother. Oh, incidentally, Mother's just going to love this elderberry juice. <laughs> What's the matter? Did I do something? You sure did. You let me cook for you. <laughs> You let me sew for you. <laughs> Hand me the ham. <laughs> you let me house clean for you. Now then, I don't know what it takes to get engaged in Tulsa, but in these here hills, you've done enough to get yourself promised, hitched, and honeymoon. <laughs> it's really a... Mrs. Bodine, I, I didn't mean to. I'm going to Beverly Hills to spend Christmas with my cousin Jeff. And when I tell him what you done, he ain't gonna take kindly to it. What, Mrs. Bodine, I give you my word that you I... You give me my hand, it sucks. <laughs> Your feet...
feet can't get no colder than they are right now. <laughs> but, Mr. Drysdale, Pearl is on her way to California to see them. Well, can you catch her in time? Oh, I think so. She's driving a horse and buggy. I'll tell her her family's on the way. No, no, this is a surprise. Well, then what'll I say? Well, say anything to keep her there until the Clappets arrive. Now get over to Pearl's. Oh, oh no, she, she might misconstrue. You see, uh, I have a very delicate situation here. <laughs> yes, you certainly have. And if you spoil Jed Clappett's Christmas surprise, he'll cut off your oil. <laughs> but, but Pearl might think I want to marry. Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, hello? Hello? Oh, boy. Here's the sweet potato pie and red horse, I promise. Hey, there's a piece of this pie missing. And a gulp for two of these red horse. Who got it, Pearl? None of your business. Now, get along. Jeff Green and me is leaving for California. Yeah, I want a whole pie just like I was promised. Now, you get out of here before I throw you out of here. Men is all alike. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> Don't you even speak to me. There ain't a man alive. Worth the powder it'd take to blow him to you nowhere. <laughs> It's just a bunch of low down, no good, Mr. Brewster. Miss Bodine, I, I hope you're not angry at me any longer. Angry at you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, here, have, have, a, have some more sweet potato pie and some red horse. Oh, well, this is a rascal who's been trying to steal my woman and my pie. I'm going to give you such a shoe. Oh. I think I throwed my dang knee out. And I'm gonna throw out the rest of you. <laughs> um, you see, in my business, I... Uh, what I mean to say is that I, I'm away from home a lot, and, uh, uh, well, I, I think that a husband should, uh, that is, uh, what I, what I mean to say is that, in my opinion, I, could I have another slug of that elderberry juice? No, you cannot. Now then, I've been sitting here for three solid hours listening to you, and you have yet to say one word that a widow woman could get her teeth into. <laughs> Jeffreen, bring the suitcases. Oh, pl oh, please don't go. I ain't listening to one more word you got to say lest you say it on your knees. Don't come in yet, Jeffreen. <laughs> say it. Please don't go. You are the slipperiest man that ever lived. Come on, Jeffreen. <laughs> Get out of my parlor, and you stay out. You want me to throw him out, Ma? <laughs> he can walk. Homer Winch, is that you again? No, Pearl, it's us. Merry Christmas, Jeffrey. Uncle Dad. Why, you have grown... <laughs> Mr. Brewster. What are you doing? Mr. Clampett, if you'd been just one second later, I'd have been engaged to your cousin Pearl. <laughs> Go back out, everybody! Oh, Mr. Clampett! Please, Mr. Clampett! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. All the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells and monkeys ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to You're ride. nothing but a two-timer, Homer Winch. Pearl told me about you sparking her, you old rascal, you. You're exciting when you're mad, Granny. <laughs> hey, how about going for a little sleigh ride with me? You promise to behave? 
sure I do. Well, we might as well stay here and sing. <laughs> Granted, the old place ain't changed a bit. Pretty as ever. Prettier with the snow. Excuse me, Paul, but I got some friends to say hi to. Yes, sir. They just don't make houses like this no more. <laughs> sure don't make them in Beverly Hills. I'll go get the bags, Uncle Jed. Reckon they just can't get wood like this. My grandpa chopped down the trees and built this all by hand. You say your grandfather built this cabin? He sure did. Oh, he must have been a remarkable man. He sure was. He finished the cabin in the morning, went to town, found a girl, courted her, married her, and carried her across that doorstep all before sundown. <laughs> Tell me, Granny, was that 18 and 97 or 18 and 98? 18 and 98. Yeah, that's right. She was 18 and Grandpa was 98. <laughs> You say he was 98 and his bride was 18? That's right. Marriage didn't work out too good. <laughs> well, I don't doubt it. Yeah, Grandpa made the mistake of having his ma come live with him. <laughs> Awful bossy old woman. Wouldn't let that little bride do nothing. Did everything herself. Your uh, family has remarkable longevity. No. Yeah. They, they, they stretch the truth a little, too. Oh? Grandpa was the day over 90 when he married that girl. And his ma didn't bust up the marriage. That poor little bride just wore out, having so many young'uns to take care of. Oh, uh, what, uh, what happened to Ellie Mae? Well, she just went to say howdy to some of her friends. It's me, Ellie Mae. I come back to visit you. Ooh. Not you, Henry. Ooh. Right now I'm looking for Maggie. You seen her? You're supposed to be so doggone wise. Where is she? Ooh. Well, Davy Crockett. Say, you're looking bushy as ever. What's the matter? What you scared of? Don't you remember me? Please, Davy. Don't run away. Oh, howdy, Mr. Beaver. Me, Ellie. What you kicking snow at me for? Oh, please, Mr. Beaver. Come back. Clampin, I certainly appreciate your letting me use your cabin as a field headquarters. I've got a few things in the bedroom. I'll, I'll get them out. No need for you to do that, Mr. Brewster. We're just going to be here a couple of days. Granny and Ellie can you uh, use the bedroom, and you and me can kind of curl up here in front of the fire. Uh, that's my kind of you, Mr. Clampett. But I'll find a place to stay in town. Well, no need for you to drive all that way through the snow. Uh, you're here, you're by the oil field, and uh, Granny cooks up a big meal that really sick to your ribs. What you cooking in the bar, Granny? My special Christmas holiday vittles. We'll start with red cabbage and green turnip tops, swimming with sorghum. <laughs> then what I call my heavenly hash. That's grits and chitlins, possum belly, hog jowls, and catfish. All minced together and simmered in gopher gravy. <laughs> Post talking. Mm. Now there's vittles you won't forget in a hurry. I'll try. What do you say, Mr. Rooster? 
roars too hard, we'll get some uh, pine boughs and ashes for you to sleep on. Oh, I, uh, I think I'll go into town. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excuse me. What's the matter with you two asking him to stay here? You want me to be a widow all my life? I was going to offer him my spare room. You ain't got no spare room, Pearl. I have if Jethro stays here. <laughs> if Mr. Brewster stays with you and Jethreen, won't, won't people talk? I hope so. <laughs> Jed can insist on him marrying me. And I'm going to get him. Now's my chance. I can't hold with making a man get married unless he wants to. He wants to? Why, that man's so in love with me, he can't eat. Yeah, but are you in love with him, Pearl? Oh, Jed, when I'm near him, I feel like my feet is dangling in a crick and the minnows is biting at my toes. <laughs> That's what you call really being in love. <laughs> Help her, Jed. Mrs. Bodine, if you'd like a ride into town, I can drop you off on my way to the hotel. Hotel? Why, you, you can't stay there. Well, no, sir. You sure can't. Why not? Why not, Jed? Uh, uh, why not, Pearl? Why not? <laughs> There's a convention there. Yeah. Every room in that hotel is full up. They're packed in there like crouch in a jar. What kind of convention? Uh, elf's convention. <laughs> that that hotel is bulging with elves. Oh, well, perhaps I can find a room in a boarding house. Huh. You know anybody got a spare room, Granny? No, I don't. Do you, Jed? Well, I see now. The uh, only spare room I know of around here is over to your house, Pearl. Why, land to mercy, I plumb for God, yes! <laughs> My spare room! What spare room, Ma? We ain't got it. Ow! <laughs> room, why don't you run out and fetch some wood? I just brought some wood in. What spare room, Ma? We ain't got no spare room. Ow! Uh, you just run along outside and get the kinks out of that leg. I ain't got no kinks in my leg. It's just that Ma just keeps out. Son, if you're gonna play hopscotch, you go outside. How sign for playing games? But I ain't playing games. And go chop me some wood. I just chop some wood. I chop her some green wood. She wants to smoke a possum. Now, I just chop some wood and I put it right there. I just put it right around the corner. Now, you come to my house, Mr. Brewster. The spare room is yours. Well, all right. If it's not, why should I sleep here on the floor? I got a rule. Ow! <laughs> He's given decisions in the leg, ain't he, Granny? <laughs> I'll have him rub it with some hot possum grease tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, let's get going. <laughs> uh, Aunt Pearl, would you do me a big favor? Well, of course, Daddy May. What is it? Would you take this year fur coat? Your mink? For, for keeps? I sure would appreciate it. It makes my friends in the woods kind of skittish. They must reckon I'll be wearing them next. <laughs> well, I don't rightly know if yeah, I Go should... ahead and take it, Pearl. That is, if you don't mind, it's been war once or twice before. <laughs> oh, not at all. I tell you what. I'll put it in one of my hope chests, and I'll uh, wear it on my honeymoon. <laughs> Say, Mr. Clampett, isn't that an awful big tree that, that Jethro's chopping down? Yeah, he's notching it on the wrong side, too. Hey, Jethro! Quit notching that tree on this side. Lava will fall right down on the gear. Look out! It missed us. Please, the Lord. Well, the tree missed. We can get up now. Well, he, he might be chopping another one. Let's wait and see. <laughs> and get her for me, I'll give you something shiny. What would you like? How about this? Okay? There. Go find Maggie. Smelly. Hi there, Smelly. It's me, Ellie. The good thing you didn't see me in that mink coat. You might have got riled at me. It's one friend I don't want riled, it's you. <laughs> Maggie, I knew Freddie would find you. Maggie, I'm so happy to see you. I told you I'd come and visit you, and here I am. Ellie? Ellie May, where are you? 
Over here, Pa. Now, don't you be scared of Pa. He won't hurt you none. Well, now, who's this? This here's my old friend, Maggie. You remember her? Sure I do. Howdy, Maggie. Say, Ellie, we's all going over to Aunt Pearl's for supper. And after supper, we's all going over to that movie picture theater where Pearl works. Well, I'd heap rather stay here. Well, Pearl says there's going to be a brand new picture from Hollywood called, uh, Ben-Hur. Well, who's in it? According to Pearl, it's got the two biggest actors there is, Francis X. Bushman and Raymond Navarro. <laughs> well, I'd still rather stay here, Pearl. Now, we's all supposed to kind of surround Mr. Brewster and brag on Pearl's piano playing during the picture. Well, Jethro can brag extra for me. But Jethro ain't going to be there. He just sat there all night and complained about Mr. Brewster having his room. Oh, come on, Ellie. Don't you want to help Pearl get a husband? Okay, Paul. Bye, Maggie. Well, Paul, ain't you gonna kiss Maggie goodbye? I don't reckon so. Uh, her husband might not like it. <laughs> come on, Ellie. Jethreen, here's a picture of your mom. Yeah, it says, in person, Pearl Bodine, wizard of the keyboard. Oh, that means Piani. Hey, your name is as big as Ben Hur's. Oh, I begged the manager not to put that up, but he says it's a drawing card. My playing during the picture. During the picture? Don't you have sound? Loads of it. Between the people crunching popcorn and frying and reading the titles out loud, you got plenty of sound. <laughs> Everybody go on in and sit down, you're all on complimentary passes. <laughs> now, I gotta pop some corn and sell tickets before I come in and play the overture. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, did you ever in all your born days see a woman who could do more things than my cousin Pearl? She can cook, sew, keep house, play piano, and... No wonder the men around here are just beating her door down to propose, but Pearl's choicey. She's waiting for the right man. Here comes Aunt Pearl! L ladies and gentlemen, before our big premiere gets underway, I know you'll want to meet the celebrities in our audience tonight. Now, a setting right here in the front row from Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the field manager of the OK Oil Company, what my cousin Ted Swamp, Mr. John Brewster. Winch, get up there and you clean off that screen right now. <gasps> Ain't you shamed? Yeah, Pearl, but I couldn't help myself. I'm just eat up with jealousy. I seen red. Well, I see it too, so clean off the movie screen. Ben Hur will look like he's bleeding before the chariot race ever starts. <laughs> Satan, when you're mad, Pearl. Get out there, you coot. <laughs> And now, during the playing of the overture, we invite your kind attention to the advertisements which will appear on the screen. I think. All right, Charlie! <laughs> Mr. Brewster, 
Mister. No, you go find him. I never felt him leave. Hey, Sam, you're right, Pearl. That's what you get for throwing yourself at a city dude. <laughs> Hush up. When well, them fellas ain't nothing but a bunch of playboys. Just like bees flitting from flower to flower, grabbing up the honey. And then when your petals is drooping, they fly away. Everybody can hear you. I ain't ashamed of what I got to say. I love Pearl Bodie. Shut up, Homer. Now, quiet down, Homer. You're making Pearl blush. Be my blushing bride, Pearl. Right here before your kinfolk, your neighbors, and Ben Hur. I'm asking you to marry me. Get up off your knees. You're making a spectacle of yourself. I, I, I caught him, Ma. <laughs> I was not sneaking. I, I simply went outside for a breath of fresh air. Put him down. You uh, wasn't running away, was you, Mr. Brewster? No, of course not. Everybody's invited over to my house for apple cider. <laughs> Wake up. Jan, you too, Jethro. Come on now, get out from underfoot, both of you. Granny, we was up late last night. Yeah, Granny, we were asleep. It ain't what you want that makes you fat, it's what you get. <laughs> get up off that rope. Hey! <laughs> what do you want to do that for? Yeah, that's cold. Well, when I say get, you get. The floor is cold and hard. Ah, you're getting soft from city life. Now get dressed, and get washed, and get packed. Packed? You heard what I said. I ain't gonna spend another night in this place. Not with that wild daughter of yourn. I didn't sleep a wink. Appears to me like you're getting a mite soft from city living, too. Time was when you never minded sharing a bed with Ellie Mae. I still don't mind sharing a bed with Ellie Mae. But I draw the line when it comes to sharing with them others. What others? Well, there was an owl and a squirrel, a crow and a fox, a possum and a skunk and a porcupine. Well, I'll go in and speak to Ellie Mae. I wouldn't go in there if I were you unless you want them flannels took right off you. What are you talking about? You know where my mink coat is right now? Where? In the top of a tree, full of baby eagles. <laughs> Their mama and me fought for nigh on to ten minutes for that coat. But with them claws on her, she could get a better purchase on it. She took it right out the window. You've been at your rheumatism medicine. I ain't about to swallow no story about a Uncle Jack, Granny, a great big old eagle just snatched the hat right off my head. See what I told you? When a mama eagle wants to keep her babies warm, she'll grab anything. Somebody better help Ellie Mae hang on to her blankets, because that rascal just flew in her window. <laughs> Frida, you had an auto took Jethro's hat. Never mind about Jethro's hat. Ask her to bring back Granny's mink coat. <laughs> Only if she wants to. Frida, you bring back Granny's mink coat. And if she's took any suitcases, see if you can get them back, too. We's packing up. <laughs> Sit down. Oh, excuse me. Good morning, Pearl. Homer Winch, I told you and I told you, don't come into my house without I invite you. I happen to be here in my official capacity as a jitney driver. Why no jitney? Well, Mr. Brewster does. <laughs> don't say nothing to Mr. Brewster, and I'll bake you two pies. Pearl, there's only one way you can seal my lips and stop my jitney, and that's with a smack. <laughs> All right. You're all right. Say that, Jan. I mean, with a kiss. A kiss? That's my price. Take it or leave it. Homer, why, that's the most shocking, disgusting, insulting, disgrace. Oh, Mr. Brute. <laughs> Pearl? Where'd you go, Pearl?
Ma's coming, and boy, is she a driver. She must have heard we's leaving. Without getting her married to Mr. Brewster. I reckon we's in for considerable balling. Ain't nobody can outcry Ma when she commences to gush. <laughs> Pearl? I reckon you's heard. We's going back to Beverly Hills. <laughs> oh, now, Pearl, you's balling already. Uh, don't worry, Pearl. You'll get a feller. <laughs> yeah, come on back to Beverly Hills with us. I can't. All right, Pearl, all right. I can't fight a woman's tears. We'll stay here until you marry, Mr. Brewster. Yeah, Ma, and, and I'll be your best man. <laughs> and you can wear that beautiful mink coat on your honeymoon. <laughs> Pearl, what are you crying about now? The mink coat. What about it? I was driving down the road and a great big eagle took it right out of my lap. <laughs> Don't you worry. Ellie Mae! Yeah, Pa? You shinny up that tree and tell that grabby eagle to give you back that mink coat for Pearl's honeymoon or she ain't no friend of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Only if she wants to, of course. <laughs>
to the right, Granny. Go to the left, Granny. Move. Move. The move's keeping you awake, too, Granny? Hey, sure is. Now, it goes right through you. Ain't there hollering that's keeping me. It's your snoring. <laughs> Look for yourself. Ellie's got two of them under the bed. Granny, we gotta get that girl back to Beverly Hills. She's going right back to being a wild cougar. What y'all all doing out here? Try to keep warm. Sure it's cold in there without you, Granny. Mind if I join you? I reckon so, if you don't mind a little human company for a change. Uncle Jed, we just got to get ourselves back to Beverly Hill. We will, Jethro, as soon as your ma gets proper hitched to Mr. Brewster. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, Pearl, give it all you got tonight. Oh, we's all going to be down with P. Pneumotony. <laughs> <laughs> Home joys divine, home joys so pure, love ever peaceful and love ever sure. Ah, that was a wonderful concert. You both are uh, unusually talented. Thank you. Yes, indeed. That, that means a lot coming from you. Naturally, folks around here brag on us. In fact, they think we ought to go on a concert tour. Oh, really? Oh, yes. My neighbors is always after me to sing out of town. <laughs> well, I can understand that. Uh, mi Mr. Brewster, do you really like music and singing? Well, I used to. I mean, I used to sing a lot myself in college musicals, amateur theatricals. Was you on the stage, Mr. Brewster? Oh, yes, yes. After college, I did quite a bit of little theater work, summer stock. Matter of fact, there was a time when I seriously considered the stage as my career. Ma, Mr. Brewster's an actor. Well, not any longer. My father had other ideas. He insisted I get into the oil business. Uh, Mr. Brewster, did you ever do anything from the Bard or Avon? That's Shakespeare. Oh, I just love him. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, I once played the lead in Romeo and Juliet. Which one was you? I was Romeo. Uh, in my youth, I was considered quite a, quite a leading man type. And there were those who thought I had rather a handsome profile. Well, you still got it. And I'll bet you can act to beat the band. Oh, come on. Take off a part for us. Something from Shakespeare. Sit down, Jethro. Well, I doubt if I can remember anything. Oh, please, Mr. Brewster. Well, uh, perhaps I can recall something from the balcony scene. Let's see now. Uh, how did it go? Uh, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Go to bed, Jethreen. Uh, well, I think I'll turn in. Oh, uh, 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 please, do some more of them love speeches from Shakespeare. Well, my throat is a little sore. I think I'd better gargle a little warm salt water and go to bed. Well, I can take care of you. That's another one of my specialties. Nursing the sick. Well, it might be the flu bug, and you wouldn't want to catch it. Uh, good night. If his flu bug is as hard to catch as he is, I got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Jed, have you ever noted to be so cold? Never have, Jethro. Ah, this ain't cold. Your blood is thinned out from living in California. You say this ain't cold, Granny? Look who else has huddled up to the fire. Ellie and her wolves. <laughs> You want me to carry Mr. Brewster over the threshold for you, Ma? She don't look too happy. She don't sound too happy, neither. Oh, all women folk cry when they're about to get married. I didn't get him. Oh. Did you try your best, Pearl? Oh, Granny, I throwed the book at him. Cooking, sewing, singing. I even nursed him through the flu. Got him well in five minutes, <laughs> but he didn't propose. Jed, you go off there.
there and do your duty to your female cousin. Ask that city fella what he'd rather get. Married or buried. Now, <laughs> Granny, I don't hold with getting folks married unless it's willing. Pearl's got enough willing for both of them. Are you going to make a liar out of my bones? Yeah, and I'll have a talk with Mr. Brewster. Where'd he go, Pearl? He said he was going to park the car on the warm side of the cabin. But he must have run off. After him, everybody, we'll head him off at the pass and shoot him down like a dog. Now, you hold on. You ain't shooting nobody down. Just simmer down. Why, he didn't run off at all. Except we'll need you, Ellie, to get him back in here. How come? Uh, looks like a couple of your friends are sizing him up for breakfast. <laughs> All sincerity, Mr. Pampett, your, your cousin Pearl is a very remarkable woman. It's just that, well, I, I don't want to get married. Oh, I understand that, Mr. Brewster, and I thank you for speaking the truth like a man, but my cousin Pearl has got herself a problem. Oh, what's that? Well, uh, ain't no secrets in the hills. and Everybody's dog knows that you've been boarding with her over at her place, and they all know she's had her cap set for you. Oh, I ain't blaming you, Mr. Brewster. Jed? Did he say yes? Can we come out now? Well, not yet a while, Granny. Well, if you're too chicken to shoot him, Ellie's got her wool standing by. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, in order to save my cousin Pearl from shame, I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Anything I can do. I want you to propose to her in front of somebody. But... And let her turn you down, of course. Oh. Oh, I see. Of course, yes, that'll save face. Uh, uh, well, uh, Pearl will know that she's supposed to turn me down. Oh, sure. We'll have an understanding with Pearl. Now, the one I think you ought to propose in front of is Elverna Bradshaw. You know, Mr. Clampett, this idea of yours is quite inspired. Oh, it's just a notion. You see, Elverna is the biggest gossip in the hill. No, really, it's brilliant. <laughs> it combines drama, pathos, suspense. It has a happy ending. Great third act curtain. It's, it's, it's real theater. Of course, you'll have to be convincing, so Elverna will... Convincing? Be... Why, I'll give a performance that the people of these hills will remember as long as they live. <laughs> well, just so that... Uh... When Pearl Bodine turns down my impassioned proposal of marriage, there won't be a dry eye in the house. <laughs> Elverna, don't cry easy. Oh, well, now, surely you're not going to waste this dramatic scene before just one person. Well, I reckon Elverna's daughter... I've got it. I've got it at the movie house where Pearl plays the piano. You want to propose there? Well, it's perfect. Everybody in town will see it. I well, want to kind of shame you to be turned down in front of all them people. Well, it's, it's just a performance. <clears throat> I've learned one thing in the theater. An actor always gives a better performance in front of a full house. Well, doggies. That sure is nice, are you? <laughs> it's, my, it's my pleasure, Mr. Bannon. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Bodine. Granny. Uh, come on in. Come, come on in, everybody. Come on in, everybody. I reckon we better let Mr. Brewster tell you what's going to happen. Oh. Well, tonight at the movie house, Mrs. Bodine, while the whole town looks on, I'm going to ask you to marry me. I got the attack! I got the attack! This calls for a whopping big snort. Now, we all quiet down, everybody, until you hear the rest of the story. Now, Pearl, when Mr. Brewster asks you to marry him, you're going to say no. Not unless I'm as drunk as you are. <laughs> Howdy, Pearl. Come in. Evening, Pearl. Evening, Hi, Granny. Jethro went on ahead down to the theater to get a fire going in the stove. Where's Jethro, ain't Pearl? Why, she's in her room getting dressed. Go on in and see her. Granny, what happened to your mink coat? This is it. Tonight's kind of special, so I'm wearing the pretty side out. <laughs> you sure got your pretty side out tonight, Pearl? <laughs> oh, I tell you, Jed, I'm as nervous as if I was going to get a real honest-to-goodness proposal. And it would be real if your cousin Jed would do his duty and hold a shotgun on that fellow, Brewster. Now, ladies, let's settle for what we got. This way, Pearl can come to California without nobody saying she left town in disgrace. Good evening. Good evening. You two got it figured out what you want to say? Oh, yeah, we rehearsed 12 times. Um, 
Mr. Brewster will be sitting on the front row. And when the picture's over, he'll jump up uh, and he's... Excuse me. I've been thinking about that. I believe it would be more effective if I made an entrance. <laughs> entrance? Yes, I'll come down the aisle. Oh, oh, all right. <sighs> and then Mr. Brewster's going to say, Mrs. Bodine, don't go to California with your cousin Jed. Stay here and be my wife. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I, I've been thinking about that, too. Uh, after a big entrance down the aisle, that's going to seem like a pretty flat opening speech. Well, you just say what you want to say. All I got to say is, no, I won't marry you. If that's Homer Winch, I'm going to hit him right in the head. <laughs> Evening, Pearl. Oh, Bernard Bradshaw, what, what are you doing here? Well, you and me being such close friends, I just thought I'd offer to play Piani for you at the theater tonight. Why? Surely you're not going to show up and have folks whispering behind your back all during the picture. <laughs> what in the world would they be whispering about? Pearl, I'm your best friend. You don't have to pretend with me. <laughs> the whole town knows how you've been flinging yourself at that border of yours. For your information, Alberta Bradshaw, Mr. Booster proposed to me 12 times today, and 12 times I turned him down. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why he give you this here mink coat? Because you turned him down. <laughs> this here mink coat was given to me by my niece, Ellen May Clampett. Oh, Pearl, I keep telling you, you don't have to pretend with me. I'm your best friend. <laughs> now, Verna Bradshaw is your best friend. You're up to your eyeballs and enemies. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, if you was to go in there now and propose in front of Elverna, you could save yourself a trip to the theater. And the news would get around a heap quicker. <laughs> you don't understand, Mr. Clampett. An actor needs an audience. <laughs> now, Verna, if you don't mind, I'd like you to get out of my coat and out of my house. I'm going to be late for the theater. Pearl, take your best friend's advice and sneak out of town quietly. <laughs> you can depend on me to smooth everything over. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> performance is right, I reckon she'll sneak out of town in a hurry if she ain't already snuck. <laughs> Mind you, Pearl's my best friend, and I ain't one to talk, but... Uh... <laughs> Good evening, lady. You too, Alverna. <laughs> mean you are leaving? Oh, yes, Mr. Brewster. I'm going to California with my cousin Jed and his family. Oh, no, 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 please. Please, I beg you. I implore you. I beseech you. Don't go. <laughs> Stay here and be my wife. <laughs> no, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> I cannot. I will not accept that answer. Oh, I love you, Pearl Bodie. I love you with all my heart. With all my soul, I love you as no man has ever loved woman before. He's better than Francis X. Bushman. Be mine. Pearl, be mine. Come back here, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> no, Mr. Brewster, my answer is no. Then your life has come to an end. But what is life without love? If I was him, I'd let it go at that. <laughs> without Pearl Bodine, there is no love. Oh, me darling, oh, me precious. Say those words that will make me the happiest of men. I'm behind you. <laughs> my answer is still no. Better quit while you're ahead, Mr. Brewster. Oh, how those words stab into my heart like cold steel. And only you, Pearl Bodine, can heal the mortal wound. Oh, moon of my desire. Marry me, Pearl. No. I promise you a life of happiness. No. A life of luxury. No. Oh, me darling, look into me tear-stained eyes. Look into the tortured face of your love slave. Free me with that one divine word. Say yes. Say yes, and together we will enter a paradise of love everlasting. Yes, 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 I'll marry you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, did you say yes? Yes! <laughs> if I hadn't said yes, I was ready myself. <laughs>